All right, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we are talking about probably the most recognizable photography technique that there actually is, which is lines. Lines can be both horizontal and vertical. And of course, what we know leading lines for most in photography is when we use them as leading lines. I think generally though, lines are always in some way going to be leading to a subject uh, when used in photography, but there are different ways that you can incorporate them and we are gonna cover them in this video. I get a ton of comments all the time on my photos uh, that they're basically just an excuse to use leading lines. And I don't believe that you're wrong. They definitely are. <laughs> Pretty much all of the photos that I take have leading lines in them uh, somewhere, somehow, some way. And they're, this is probably the technique that I use uh, most. So if you don't remember in the previous videos, we talked about photography elements and photography principles, obviously elements being what make up a photo and principles being how we make sense of those elements and turn them into an aesthetically pleasing photo. Lines are an element of photography and that is because they're basically everywhere. We can use them however we want in any which way. Leading lines are bucketed under this idea of continuity and this will be covered in a separate video what exactly is continuity, but in general, continuity helps us understand the direction of a photograph and more often than not, lines will be the tool that we use to display direction in our photos. So that leads me to what exactly are lines in photography and what do they do? The most basic way I could put it is that lines essentially create a direction and viewpoint for us to follow in our photographs. Another cool way that lines can be used though are as boundaries. Oftentimes you can have lines that shape a photo from what's meaningful and what's not. And that is a good technique to use depending on how you wanna compose your photos to not just always have them uh, pointing towards your subject. For example, in a landscape photo, you will have a division between sky and ground, the horizon line being the boundary at which the ground uh, separates itself from the sky. The good news about lines is that they're also not as rigid as we might think. So in architecture, obviously lines feature quite heavily, but I would argue that in comparison to architecture where lines are quite rigid, lines can be quite soft in our photos, whether it's the blending of two different colors that create a line or facial features like wrinkles and jaw lines. There are different types of lines that make up our photos. As a good example, in street photography, a hard edged building is a line, but the lines that make up a cloud are soft and fuzzy. The other cool tool about lines is that they actually give our photos a sense of connection. So lines being led from foreground to background, for instance, help give our photo a little bit more depth than would otherwise be possible and help just connect the entire frame so that it doesn't feel disparate and disconnected. So that leads us into our second part on how to actually incorporate lines in our photography. The main tool and of course the most popular way of using lines in photography is in using leading lines. So leading lines can be both natural and man-made. A natural leading line is obviously like a river or a pathway through a forest or something that's just like clear cut out uh, that directs our eye throughout the scene. Whereas a man-made leading line is, you know, a roadway or some sort of building that's pointing in a direction. The general purpose of these lines though is that they will take us directly to our subject. That's what makes them leading. They're leading to our subject. So what do they do in entirely? Well, number one, they guide our viewer's eye throughout the photo and help us explore the entirety of an image. They draw our attention to the main subject or focal point. They add a sense of depth and perspective to a photo to make it feel a little bit more immersive. And they can also uh, be a subject in their own way if you're doing something with abstract photography, for instance. So let's take this photo here of the streetcar lines pointing directly to the streetcar. This is a perfect example of leading lines because we are first attracted by noticing the reflections on the ground of the streetcar and then immediately our attention is pointing towards the streetcar tracks and that leads directly to the streetcar. And that's why streetcar photos are so popular is because they're a fairly easy subject to get direction. Uh, pointing towards them as a result of just the tracks being on the ground. Another element of this photo, however, are the vertical lines. So not only are the leading lines pointing towards the streetcar, but then behind the streetcar are vertical lines that immediately point back 
down to the streetcar, all leading to that one center focal point. So that leads us to our second type of line, which are vertical lines. I don't incorporate vertical lines all that much. In urban settings, they're not as overt as you might find in nature, where you're walking through a forest and you have rows and rows and rows of trees that you're able to take advantage of. Uh, the idea with these is that it's supposed to add a little bit more structure to your photos. And depending on how it's used, like in our previous example, it also points back down towards a subject. It also is a great tool for utilizing patterns in photography. If you have continual occurrences of a vertical line, you're able to capture patterns in your photography that would not otherwise be possible in that environment. There are different types of vertical lines. There are thick vertical lines like that of tree trunks. Another type of line are just lines in general. And there are different results that vertical lines actually create in our photos similar to leading lines. The first one being a element of patterns. So with thick vertical lines, like with tree trunks, we're able to capture repeatable occurrences of the same thing and that would create patterns. Another thing is that they actually help us look up and down an image because we naturally scan images left to right. Uh, vertical lines are a good element to help us look at images differently than we normally would. From vertical lines then, we go on to horizontal lines and horizontal lines are something that I've not really incorporated in my photography specifically, but they are a cool way, I would say, if you're looking to incorporate a different element into your portrait photography. You can have someone leaning on a wall and having lines crossing back behind them to help guide the viewer's eye to the center of the frame. The one thing I'll mention though is horizontal lines can be a little bit wonky because if they are not perfectly straight, the effect doesn't really work out as well. So if you are trying to capture horizontal lines, make sure that they are straight. That will create a better effect in, uh, in using them. So for this one, I'm going to use an architecture photo. And as you can see, the building on the left has horizontal lines pointing towards the vertical line lines on the right. Another example could be this photo here with the building in the middle. Obviously the big part of this photo is framing, but the building on the left has horizontal lines pointing towards the building that's in the middle of the photo. And that is again, a use of horizontal lines to help direct attention. Finally, then we can look at this photo of the man crossing the street with the streetcar off behind him and use this as an example for converging lines. Converging lines have the same effect as the other types of lines, but the difference is, is that they help pinpoint our focus on a specific laneway, I'm gonna call it, of the photograph. So in this shot here, you have the gray streetcar tracks, and in those streetcar tracks, as the photo moves from left to right, the two lines converge and our point of interest is focused within the boundaries of those gray lines. The cool thing is that this is a great example on perspective and how the way that these lines converge helps give us a clear picture on dimension of the photo and how far the road actually goes and how much depth is actually in the photo. So with that, I'm gonna stop the video here. If you did find this video useful, be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you liked. If you do have any questions, Questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram. As always, I'm trying to get back to everybody as much as I can, so I really do appreciate the support. The number one thing I'll say though about leading lines is that you have to use it tastefully. When you use the lines overtly, I think it kind of gets a little bit of like, it cheapens the photo in a way. Uh, so just be mindful of that. Find a way to incorporate it into the scene to make it look natural. And it's not just an arrow on the ground pointing towards your subject. You know, that's the number one thing I would say we need to avoid uh, when using lines in our photos. So with that, I'll cut it off here. If you do have any questions, again, please let me know. And otherwise I will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.